Okay, so let's look at a new program called Cyber and Data. And it's really aims to merge the two areas together, cybersecurity and data science. And the site itself can be accessed from cyberdata.site. Overall, it's been funded by the Data Labs in Scotland and by Edinburgh Napier University. So there are many ways that we can view our new world. Uh, some would define it as Industry 4.0, uh, but we're certainly moving towards uh, a world which is increasingly driven by data. With this, we might define the six C's, such as connection, that's the sensors and the networks, cloud, that's the computing infrastructure and data on demand, cyber, the model and the memory, context and content, that's the meaning and correlation, community, the sharing and collaboration, and customization, that's the personalization and the value that we get from data. But we might also define it in terms of six fees, the volume of the data, the velocity, variety, variability, veracity, and of course, the value. In this program, we'll be looking at each of the elements of these things and trying to understand how we better use data and how we can integrate that with cybersecurity. So the core objectives of the program is to really understand the core elements of how we use data within cybersecurity. Increasingly, we need to fuse this data to make some sense. We need to gather lots of data across uh, an organization and to make sense, to correlate data, to link data, uh, and to proactively uh, make judgments on that data but also to investigate whenever we have things like a security incident. We also want to show some of the practical areas around data science and cybersecurity, such as using regular expressions, similarity matching, and so on. So for this, we'll be looking a little bit into Python and how we can use Python to be able to uh, integrate uh, tools to be able to process and analyze our data. And then we'll look at the practical elements of uh, data analysis and Splunk and, uh, and use a tool called Splunk. In the industry, this is a well-known tool and is used in many different applications. And then in the end, we'll look at how we can integrate machine learning, artificial intelligence, areas like that into cybersecurity and look beyond our current horizon. The site itself is is uh, uh, is online, and uh, it's split into a number of key units. In the first unit, uh, we'll cover some of the basic fundamentals, the terminologies used, the policies, firewalls, and and so on. And then we'll try to look at uh, open source intelligence, how we can mine uh, open source sources such as Shodan, Reddit, Twitter, and so on, and to make some sense of these, especially to look at things like sentiment analysis. And then uh, at the end of this unit, we'll be looking at what really data is and all the different formats. And we'll find there are many different formats that we use for our uh, data infrastructure. And especially we'll look at what are called magic numbers on files. Those are the little identifiers that allow us to be able to spot when we see certain files on our system. In the second unit, we'll be looking a bit more in depth at what uh, big data really is and how we can integrate our security information and event management or SIEM uh, infrastructure into our processing and capturing of uh, data related to cybersecurity. And then a fundamental part is really that we need to understand how networks actually work, how the core protocols work, Ethernet, ARP, IP, TCP, and how especially the application layer protocols can work. So as part of that, we'll be looking into uh, packet traces and to try to search for things can, contained within them, but really trying to understand how 
application protocols and how networks work when we're uh, uh, communicating. And then we'll look at what are called the intrusion detection systems. How can we set up little detectors across the network infrastructure to detect when there might be something uh, happening that could be interesting from a cybersecurity point of view? In the third unit, we'll build on this and look towards integrating some data science and machine learning. For that, we'll be looking at the core classification metrics that will allow us to assess whether our models are good or not in identifying uh, cybersecurity uh, elements. And then a little bit around the core elements of data science and what it really means, but to then look at how we can use Python to be able to integrate uh, cybersecurity related data sets. And that's especially looking at uh, NumPy and Pandas and how they could be used to be able to process uh, our data sets. And then finally in this unit, we'll be looking at an important area of similarity uh, matching. For this, we'll especially look at regular expressions, similarity metrics, and similarity hashes to be able to find things that are similar uh, to each other. And then finally, we'll look at some of the applications and we'll uh, dive into Splunk and understand how that actually operates and how we can use it to be able to find things. And then on to how we can apply machine learning into that Splunk infrastructure. And finally, we'll end on a tutorial which will look at applying machine learning into Splunk. So here are some of the uh, areas that we'll end up on and we'll see that we can use machine learning in lots of different ways. We can use it to find outliers in our data. We know what normality looks like. Can we find things that are at the extremes that might be what are called anomalies? And then we can even use it to predict our data. If we have something from the past, we have trends and so on, can we use those to be able to predict what we think is going to happen? And then we can also prepare our data to make sure that we get it in the right format, we scale, we make sure all our data sets are in the right order and of the right range. And then we'll look at uh, groupings and how we can cluster things together and the different methods that are used in, in there. And then finally, we'll look at uh, forecasting methods, how we can take a previous trend and try to forecast into the future. So this will be our end point where we're actually starting to look at how the machine can learn and make some sense of this extremely complex infrastructure that we have. The site itself is here, so uh, it's splitting to the four units that, that we have. And then from there, uh, you should be able to access each of the, the, the topics. If we just open up, we'll see that each of the areas has an associated uh, lecture. So there should be a, a YouTube video that you can access, and then there will typically be a lab and a test and a little fun test along with uh, the, the slides. Okay, so you should find that most of the material uh, is actually there that, that you require, uh, and for some some uh, people learning, they may want to skip some of the earlier material because they've already covered it, but it's really important that you do understand some of the core elements to be able to build your knowledge towards some of the, the more uh, detailed work that we'll do uh, late, later on. Along with this, there's a, a learning environment. Uh, so this is the Splunk learning environment. This is what you would find in, a, in an organization. And we can use this tool to be able to search for things like the top IP address that's accessed our site for a certain condition, uh, looking at things like status codes, which are very important. And for this, we can find out whenever there's been a 404 code, which means that uh, uh, the the page cannot be found. It is these status codes that we often look for in terms of our data to be able to understand or be able to find a, a, give an understanding of the current state of the of the infrastructure. 
Along with this, uh, we've integrated uh, machine learning methods into, into here uh, too. And there is a range of experiments that can be uh, tried out. And these should give us some idea about how we can use uh, the machine learning integration to be able to build up uh, fairly complex models and to make predictions on our data. Splunk is also an excellent tool to be able to chart and report and also produce uh, our, our uh, visualizations along with a dashboard. Okay, so that's the that's the elements that uh, that that you have uh, to to go forward. Uh, there is an online environment for uh, Python integration. So we're using the Replit infrastructure. So you should be able to do your coding and your analysis with inside uh, Replit uh, and not actually have to integrate with, uh, with an, an operating system. And we also have uh, an online uh, snort analyzer uh, here. So uh, this will allow you to be able to understand how snort actually works uh, without actually having to analyze it on the on a live website. So this with this we can write some rules. We can use standard traces that we can examine. Uh, such as clicking here, we'll be able to see the trace that's been analysed and then we can write rules that will allow us to be able to detect some threats with inside our, our traffic. And finally, we also have uh, standard network traces that you can analyse. So often cybersecurity, we will use uh, uh, what are called Wireshark traces to be able to look at the uh, the network traffic and try to analyze that. So you find in the in the course uh, we have a range of these uh, Wireshark traces so that you can actually analyze and understand how networks actually work. Okay, so that's our syllabus, that's our content. Uh, so please uh, go and make use of it. If you have any feedback, then please get in contact uh, with us and uh, we'll be developing more material as we go along and hopefully you can support uh, the site as, as it develops. Okay, so the site is, of course, cyberdata.site and uh, please go ahead and uh, start learning the amazing world of cyber and data. Thank you.